Fixed gear riders, we are all about the hype. We only like to use components that are tried and true, tested and loved by thousands, if not tens of thousands of other fixed gear riders that have proven their worth over years, if not decades of hard use. And because of that, there tends to be a lot of hype that surrounds the most popular fixed gear components. Sometimes the hype isn't all it's cracked up to be, but here are seven fixed gear components where the hype is actually true. All the links for the components we'll be talking about today are in the description, so feel free to check that out at any point during this video. And speaking of hyped up fixed gear components that are 100% worth the money, a portion of this video is sponsored by Wabi Cycles. Spoiler alert, they're on the list. If you want to learn more about the bike that I ride on a daily basis, the only bike that I own, check out Wabi Cycles link at the top of the description. This first component on the list is one that I've been pussyfooting on whether I should get for the past two years, and they are the Nitto Bull Moose Bars. The Bull Moose Bar has somewhat of a cult following in the cycling world, where anybody that was around at the beginning of mountain biking fondly remembers these because these were on about every single mountain bike during that time. And they were designed to be the stiffest bar possible, giving you lots of leverage with that nice and comfortable 71 centimeter width, since a lot of fixed gear riders tend to like really wide riser bars and not care too much about the weight of our bikes. The Bull Moose Bars found a second home. Bull Moose Bars are really wide, so if you ride in dense traffic, you're not going to be able to slip through as easily. They are completely steel. The bars, the stems, yes, stems, multiple. It's all steel. It's all welded together. They are not going to be light. But I say the Bull Moose Bar is 100% worth that secret society type hype that surrounds it because they do something that is core to the root of cycling and that is when i ride them it just puts a big old dumb smile on my face and hair on my chest and that is what cycling is about and the fact that roadies now look really silly when they try to challenge me to a race is just a cherry on top of the bull moose sunday and on top of all that I found that they're not as impractical as they seem. So stop counting each and every gram and trying to be as aerodynamic as possible because your bike is just supposed to be fun. And Bull Moose Bars will 100% make your bike more fun. About six months ago, I bought Toshi double straps because I wanted to be a baller. But to my surprise, after dropping $150 with their comfort and their power transfer, and the fact that they just look so dang good and classy and they embody that style of this is the way things are meant to be made and they don't make things the way they used to makes Toshi Double Straps worth every single penny. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous to drop $150 on just a set of measly toe straps. But once you put your foot into the Toshi Leather Double Straps, You'll find that they keep their shape around your foot like nothing else and they cradle it, keeping it very comfortable. But at the same time, when you really need to put the power through the pedals and you need to pull up on them, they can handle that just as well. Since they have a plastic inner lining inside them that keeps them from stretching and looking like my old set of straps, which are only about a year and a half old. <laughs> Toasty double straps make me never want to go back to clipless. Yeah, they're expensive but they're also comfortable, they're classy, and they will likely last a lifetime. The Kilo TT and the Kilo TT Pro. Yeah, you've probably heard about them if you are searching for getting a complete bike at any price range. The Kilo TT, after over a decade, is still the best entry-level fixed gear bike, even with its recent price increase. It used to cost 400 US dollars, and now it costs 500, and the Kilo TT Pro used to cost 450, now it costs 600. And I would say that these are both, although much more expensive than they used to be, still really good buys for the price. Just the fact that you're getting so much bike for the money, where everything on it is usable and doesn't exactly need to be upgraded out of the box, makes the Kilo TT just an easy choice if you're looking to get into fixed gear or single speed riding. And the fact that the Kilo TT is just so well respected within the fixed gear community despite being a entry level 
fixed gear means that you can build it up pretty snazzily and no one's going to bat an eye on it. Although with the price increase, it's less good value out of the box, but still a solid buy and it gives you a platform for you to grow in your fixed gear riding if you want to upgrade down the line. Another component that has a cult-like following if you peruse any forums on the internet are Wabi wheels. Every single person on the forums or that I've talked to that has ridden Wabi wheels absolutely adores them, myself included. The thing that makes Wabi wheels so special is their price to quality and performance ratio. The regular set of Wabi lightweight wheels comes in at 300 US dollars and the fancier version, which are even lighter weight, the Sub-15s, those are the ones that I ride, come in at 350 US dollars. And for that price, you're getting the lightest wheels in this price range and beyond without sacrificing durability because Wabi wheels are hand tensioned at the Wabi shop before they're shipped out. If memory serves me correctly, the standard lightweight wheels come in at around 1800 to 1900 grams and the sub 15s come in at under 1500 grams. Now I'm not a weight weenie, but even then, that amount of weight savings is impressive to me. <laughs> Being so lightweight, it's really easy to get them spun up from stops and to get them uphill, but they're also oddly really durable because they're hand tensioned. No, they're not going to turn as many heads as your typical super hype H plus sun archetypes laced to fill wood hubs, but once you give them a spin and feel those silky smooth bearings rotating those super lightweight spokes and wheels and you just fly off the start, you won't even care that they don't get as much attention. The Lobby frame set is another one of those things that just has a cult following where if you have ever searched for Wobby on the internet, you would find pretty much the exact same opinion of this is one of the best, if not the best bike that I've ever ridden, and it's not even the most expensive one that I've ever ridden. I've ridden carbon road bikes, I've ridden fancy titanium bikes, but for some reason, I keep gravitating towards this steel wobby, is what people usually say. And I've found that to be true for myself as well. It is so good that I don't even care to own any other bike. I was skeptical at first too. I was reading all the forums of wobbies and People just kept on saying the same thing, where it's like, this is one of the greatest bikes, just get it. And I thought, there's no way that people could be so uniform in their opinion and hyping something up. There has to be at least one person who thinks like, yeah, it's okay at least, or no, it's bad, but I couldn't find any of those opinions everywhere. But after trying out for myself, it turns out the hype is true. Of course, take anything that I say about Wobby with a grain of salt because they do sponsor the channel. If you're at least a little bit interested in checking them out, go find that information for yourself on the forums and in the reviews, and you're probably going to find the exact same thing of what I said. <laughs> Another one of those components that is just so universally loved that it makes it seem like something fishy is going on, whether people are being paid off or whether the bike company is actually a cult are Brooks saddles. Whether you go for a Brooks Cambium at $80 or a Brooks Swift like what I'm riding at $150, it will probably be the most comfortable saddle you've ever ridden by far. The worst thing that people can say about Brooks saddles is that they're heavy. And yeah, a leather Brooks saddle with a steel frame is definitely going to be heavier than a modern plastic and foam saddle. But it's also gonna be a hell of a lot more comfortable and that's what a saddle's job is. I've ridden multiple 80 plus, 100 plus mile rides, fixed gear of course, just to give me some fixy points, on my Brook Cambium and my Brook Swift. By the way, I did those rides in jeans. And the only thing that wasn't sore after those mega mile rides was my rear. It's actually insane how putting a Brook saddle on your bike and really dialing it in and breaking it in can flip the paradigm of comfort for your bike, where most people think that the most painful thing on a bike is going to be your rear. But then, when you put a Brooks saddle on it, that becomes the most comfortable thing on your bike that is very rarely ever sore. <laughs> yeah, it can seem like they're super hyped up and absolutely adored, and you might even become skeptical and think there's no way they're that good. 
but try one out for yourself. Take that leap of faith and spend that money if you have the chance. And I am certain you will find a whole new layer of joy when riding your bike. And number one, clocking in at $40 per tire is the Continental Gator Skin. The Gator Skin is one of those components that just never seems to go away no matter how many innovations are made in tire technology when it comes to tire plushness to stiffness to puncture resistant ratios to rolling resistance. It's just a really damn good tire and it balances all of those things pretty well. Gator Skins have been the go-to fixed gear tire for over a decade and I'd still say that they are the go-to. I rode my first set of Gator Skins for two years, which is about 4,000 to 5,000-ish miles, and I got two flats. Two flats! And I was also skidding pretty liberally with them, and they still lasted about 4,000 or 5,000 miles. That is an insane value for a fixed gear rider since we are always chewing through our tires by skidding. Yeah, there's more puncture resistant tires out there. There's definitely faster tires out there, and there's plusher, more comfortable tires out there. But not a single one of them combines all three into a complete package the way that gator skins do. While I have ridden a lot of different bikes and components, I haven't ridden everything, and there's a lot of hype stuff that I've never tried. So my question for you is, what face your components have you tried and found that the hype is 100% worth it. Let me know in the comments below so we can point to other fixed gear riders in the right direction to find those components that are just a joy to use. And Fixie Fam shoutouts to Brandon Black, Kelvin Ho, Zane Kolnick, OC Bike Crew, Ryan Witt, Stan Strong 108, Julian Corona, David Clippins, Ellie Lovelace, and Justin Javier for helping to make these fixed gear videos possible through their support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter. So, Ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.